Hello and welcome to Watch What Crap Ins, a podcast about all that crap on Bravo that we just love to talk about. I'm Ben Mandelker and joining me today on this very special Vanderpump Rules recap day, Mr. Ronnie Karam. Hi, Ronnie. How's it going? Well, hello, Banuni Tunes. How are you? Wow. Uh, I am great. I'm just, you know, like riding on the high of Vanderpump Rules season 10. It's just such a crazy season. Every episode, especially now as we're just like closing in on like the scandal of the season it's just it's like every episode is like so cringy and crazy oh my goodness it's wild how about how are you yeah, doing a lot of a lot of hatred flowing through my veins which i love you know i thrive on yeah. that that's, my, that's like my energy so um i feel great yeah. <laughs> but yeah also i feel good because we are traveling next week we are starting the last leg of our tour we start in new york city and then we go to Washington, D.C. We're going to be doing um, Real Housewives of New Jersey in New York City at the Town Hall on Thursday. And then on Saturday, we'll be in D.C. doing Pump. So this next Pump recap is going to be the pen penultimate episode, and it will be a little late. So sorry yes. about that. But sorry. you know what? It's going to be to a big booing crowd. And that's what, yeah. that's what we love. That's the best way to do Vanderpump Rules. Yeah, totally. So that'll be up next Saturday. And then in June, we're going all over the place. We're going to San Diego. We're going to St. Paul, Minnesota. We're going to Chicago. We're going to Columbus, we're going to Boston, and we're ending in Foxwoods. So we, here we are. It's really like the last um, six or seven shows of the tour. And then after that, the tour is over. So if you miss it, you miss it. So it. please definitely come. Come to these shows because it's going to be great. Also, this is going to be a Crappens on Demand episode. Hi, everyone. You get to not just listen, you can watch if you support on Patreon. Good. There's a, I'm going to say a 93% chance that Bueller is going to go walk up on the sofa behind Ronnie during this episode. So, I mean, for that alone, right. you should get excited. So that's on patreon.com slash watch our crap as well as our bonus episode this week. Uh, the bonus episode is just like a chatty bonus about lots of things going on in our lives. So come join. And then for today, wow. Vanderpump Rules. I when I was watching this episode, I was wondering how, like, how is this episode supposed to be if Scandaval had not broken? Like, how are they going to edit it? Like, would they have included all this intrigue about Sandoval and Raquel, or would they have really focused on uh Schwartz and Raquel and Katie? Would that have been the emphasis of these episodes? I think they it's obvious that they went back and recorded new stuff, right? I mean, yeah. this all this Lala stuff, like suddenly Lala's, you know, Angela Lansbury and murder she wrote. <laughs> she figured everything out. And Lala's just so fucking smart. She had this whole thing figured out. I'm not buying that for one second because that whole cast was so shocked when all of this came out. I'm surprised that now they're like, oh, my God, they're totally cheating, guys. They're yeah. totally cheating. So... Is that new or is I was that wondering not that. new? And people were just acting surprised. I'm not saying I know it's new. I don't. But just as a casual viewer, well, I guess not so casual. It just doesn't make sense. <laughs> as a formal me. viewer. You know, yeah. I uh, I was wondering that too. I was like, did they shoot this after the fact? Um, and then I decided I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to give myself over to her because I really did enjoy that entire sequence. But, you know, at the same time, at the end of the episode, when Ariana is confronting Sandoval about like why like why didn't you come back from this party or all the discussion about Raquel that can't staying be new. over that was that was from the time that like can't that was be new, conversations right? and law and Lala was seen in that scene figuring everything out basically so yeah I guess my question now is why was everybody so surprised when this came out or were they not surprised but they just wanted to cash in on it because listen we have a Vanderpump Rules podcast I'm not like <laughs> I'm not throwing stones at this glass house, okay? But, um, you know, they do cash in on it. Sheena and Lala haven't shut the fuck up about it since it right. came out. Yeah, so, I, I don't know. Yeah, I wonder if, like, tonally the episode was supposed to be, like, maybe there was some shade thrown at, like, Sandoval and Raquel, but it was all to kind of, like, um, like, maybe to make Katie look bad. Like, she's, like, trying to take people down in an effort to hurt Schwartz. I kind of feel like that was maybe what the initial tone of the episode was but now they've really seems like they've they've obviously leaned into like oh my goodness here are all the signs it's happening everyone but we'll never know maybe that's the way the episode always was all along 
Yeah, we don't really know. Um, I will say Katie and Lala at this point are just like those people at the murder mystery party. They're like the worst. Pe You've been to one of those, right? Like um, I've actually never been to a murder mystery. Okay, well, uh, let me tell you. They're I the feel worst. like I have because of Bravo. I feel like I've been to many murder mystery parties. Right, well, let me tell you, they're the worst because yeah. there's always those people. And you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and admit it. It's me. <laughs> there are always those people who are like, you did it. It was you. And I know it was you. Because you are an accountant and I don't trust accountants. And they're like, well, mm. that's not a reason to murder somebody. I'm like, you did it. And then they go around and they just start accusing everybody. So by the time they they're out of people. So like eventually right. you're going to choose the right person and ruin the whole night for everybody. You know? Yeah. So yeah. I feel like they're kind of murder mysterying it up. Well, they'll just they'll accuse everyone. And then um, and then by the time the murder mystery is revealed, because they've accused everyone, you it's like the broken clock thing. It's like, oh, yeah, you got it right. And then they can be like, see, I knew all along. It's like, no, you just chose everything. That being said, Lala, also, can we just say laugh. about broken clocks? I need to just say about broken clocks. Everyone's like, well, even a broken clock is twice, twice, twice a day. Guess what? I throw the clock out, throw the clock out because it's still a broken fucking clock. OK, so I'm sick of you. Everyone using the broken clock thing like, oh, well, broken clocks. Yeah. Throw it away and get a clock that works. OK, well, um, or put batteries back into it. And also, by the way, if it's military time, guess what? Now your broken clocks only right once a day. Hmm, that's a 50 percent drop. So um, anyway, it I really will say is. Lala Lala did make me laugh this episode, but we'll she, get to she that. She did, yeah. She had I a, was like a very it was like glimmers episode. of yeah, glimmers of like classic Lala for me. So um yeah. the episode opens up like we're watching an episode of 24. Um yes. which <laughs> or so now Tom, Summer House, because Summer yes. House does this too, where they just show all the different cameras like lighting up and you're like, Oh my god, what's happening? Got four GoPros in one car. <laughs> so Tom and Tom, who are, you know, by the way, they are committed to working day and night, every waking hour to opening up Schwartz and Sandy's are also, by the way, in a car now going off to the desert to go glamping for Raquel's birthday. You know, this is her <laughs> hero season. So we're going to end the season with Raquel's birthday. And that's another question. And I'm sorry, audience, for coming with all these questions to a recap where we should know things. But um, another question, what was supposed to be the season finale? Was it the beach last week? Was it this this week? I think because it's... this was a party, but they wouldn't give Christina's party the season finale. <laughs> no, right? no, definitely not. I think next week was probably supposed to be the season finale. It's probably, I'm going to assume next week is the opening. Well, it's, it looks like it's like the opening preview of something about her, which is funny because it probably originally was supposed to be Schwartz and Sandy's, which is why they were so dead set on opening on a certain date, because that was probably the season finale date. But then they just sort of kept on going. I, you can always tell in these shows when the season finale plan goes awry because of like COVID or something. I mean, that's why I firmly believe last season on Orange County, we had one of the strangest season finale parties of all time. Shannon being so um, I, I thought it would be fun if if we did a music video in my backyard. Well, I'll, well, I'll do it. The OC reels. Ah. Like, I want to celebrate my new chicken dish for the real reels and uh, do a do a song. Wasn't it like a chicken celebration or something? It was, it was like weird... a, a, an unveiling of the of the real for real for real chicken sponsored real by for... Carabella and performances by the OC reels. I mean, it's like nothing made sense. <laughs> so here we are in the car. I'm glad they got four GoPros for this lame ass uh, drive that yeah. we didn't even see. That we just see them getting in the car. Sandy's driving them. Schwartz is in a bucket hat, which is bad enough. But then Ariana's in a bucket hat, and I was like, okay. So has this show just decided to stop making any effort at this point? Because frankly, yeah. I'm I'm going to cheat on all of you. <laughs> all of you. All of you bucket are dead hats. to be with your fucking bucket hats. Okay, get out of here, Gilligan. Go on the go on the side of the street with your fucking broken clock. <laughs> Take your three hour tour, and we'll see you never. So, um, uh, the original glampers, Gilligan. So uh, they uh, they go, they drive off, and Lisa calls up. She goes, "Oh, where are you guys going?" And Raquel is like, "We're going glamping for my birthday." Goes, oh, wonderful! Have a good time. Be sure to relax because you've been doing a lot of other relaxing that needs to be relaxed from. So go have a wonderful time. I wish I could go with you, but I don't do glamping. I do, however, do 
lamping, which is a Nicolene <laughs> lamp inside of a larger Nicolene lamp. Inside of a larger Nicolene. Do you need anything from us, Lisa? Jesus Christ. <laughs> hey, Lisa, dude, if you want to come, you can share a bed with Ariana and I. She's just here, Lisa. Nicolene! I shan't be there, but my presence will be felt because, surprise, I've installed a giant pendulum inside your car. Dude! <laughs> I can't drive with this thing. So then she hangs up and she gets a, a tss. It's like, why does she get a tss for calling <laughs> to say hi? Oh, I think it's because she, Sandoval said you could share a bed with Ariana and I. And Ariana's like, yeah, people are making uh, open relationship comments about us. Maybe we shouldn't be making jokes like that. I'm in a very yeah. serious bucket hat today. And this should have given yeah. you a hint not to make mm -hmm. open relationship jokes. You fuck. Yeah, we all know. For an open relationship, the proper hat is a bowler. So Trixie is Trixie Monocle singing her song, which goes something like, I like diamonds. I like playing by the ocean. I like Rockefeller dudes and football coaches. Money, money. That's my middle name. Baby, keep it sunny and make it rain. I Those could not be the lyrics. Did I miswrite those lyrics? I like uh, that's Rockefeller to what dudes I got. and football coaches. I think yours are better. <laughs> Mine is. I like diamonds playing by the ocean. I like Rockefeller doing doing poaching. I was like poaching. Who the hell <laughs> wants to be with some a chicken. poacher? No, no, maybe just poaching some chicken to the side, like Rockefeller. Oh, yeah. It's it a real. Rockefeller who really likes to poach, like their food. <laughs> I really like Rockefeller sous vide. <laughs> but I also uh, love the money, money, money is my middle name. I'm like, you guys are going to a desert to sleep outside. Yeah, like, this is not really about rich people. This you're... show is about poor people. Can we stop with the Rockefeller rhymes? Please? I know. Like, literally, you're sleeping in a yurt tonight. And yeah. by the way, I was thinking about naming this episode Yurt People, Yurt People. But then um, I feel like Tom Sandoval says dipping out so many times. I just have to come out with come up with a pun with dipping out because everything with him is like, dude, you just like dipped out and he dipped out and I dipped out. I'm like, oh, my goodness, please stop saying dipped out. That is Tom Sandoval's lack of English. He can't lie like a really smart person where you can tell because they start using too big of words. So this is just like his rep his repetition of just like a really lame, small word. You know, you're, like, you're lying. That's your tell, Tom. Okay, that's your tell. So let's go to Kuyam, Kuyama Oaks Ranch. Yeah. Um, where we meet Nat, Dust lives. Nate. Yeah, Dust lives with Nate. Nate's like, hey, girl, welcome to the ranch, okay? This is my husband. Time to eat ranch, bitches. We're at a ranch. <laughs> I like later when he's like, time for dinner, bitches. Like, yes, I love, I love sassy Nate and his husband just getting a fucking plot of land in Palm Springs and being like, we're getting a porta potty and a couple of tiles from Home Depot <laughs> and calling this a fucking glamping location, bitch. Seriously. I now listen, I totally support gays in the desert. Like gays are doing it for themselves. Well, you better because where Making the fuck the do you think you're going to end up? That's I know. We're ending up. We're gay. We're Palm Springs for life. So you better start getting used to it. Buddy. That's the, that's the gay trajectory. You just wind up in the desert. You know, mm -hmm. we're all like Moses in some way, but that being said, I mean, I feel like we've seen some glamping on in the world of Bravo, and um, in the world of glamping, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this is a little bit closer to camping than glamping. I'm just gonna say it right now. I feel like we need to get more of the glue going on in this one. Okay, this is no, cramping. just a note. <laughs> this is cramping. No one had room. I mean, glamping. At least you get a yurt. Where was the yurt? There was no yurt. These there was were a yurt. literally. Oh, yeah. Not yurts. real yurts, but they weren't like yurts like you see on where they're like, here's a glamping yurt. And it's like a huge three ring circus right. yurt. It wasn't know? like with wicker things hanging down and gorgeous. It was right. just like an actual like like a functional. It was like you were really in Siberia in a yurt. And um, it's not like when they went to like have like I feel like in other glamping experiences, they've had actual cabins with electricity uh -huh. and beds, you know. Yeah. So I'm just saying I think we could. I think we could. Nate, Nate, you're a terrible Nate. glamping instructor. Okay. <laughs> These are terrible yurts. I hope that this show makes you famous enough to save up for some real yurts. I even have a link that I will send you for real yurts because I was like, I'm going to start a glamping business. Did I ever tell you real that? Real for Last, real yurts. That was my thing this year. I was like, 
I need to be a businessman. I think because of all these Trixie Monocle songs that are like, I got money, money, I got money. I'm a Rockefeller. I like sous vide. So I was like, I'm going to learn to sous vide things and I'm going to start a, a glamping business in Texas where you just put a uh, yurt with some air conditioning, decorate the fuck out of it, and then have it like a wedding venue where people come and they rent their yurts. You yeah. know, that was going to be my thing. And I was like, great, yurts. How much could that be? $20? And then I was like, that's not i'm not it's like buying a house fuck you yurting okay yurt is yeah yurts yurts are like a whole thing my friend has a yurt in her backyard and there's oh. a lot of, yeah this must be very I mean, fancy because i <laughs> discovered that you have to be a Rockefeller to get a yurt yeah yurts are like yurts are high low culture because aren't yurts isn't there aren't there origin like people in siberia have yurts on the step and it's like that's a yurt. That's that's like the world of the yurt. But now it's like it is very goopy. It's very goop to have a yurt. It's like a, you go and you get a massage in a yurt, and then like Gwyneth has turned into a yurt lady. She that's, is a yurt. Because, you know, she got so much attention of, over that skiing thing that I saw a lot of clips of of Gwyneth, and she does, um, I guess, things with listener interviews with people where she does it like we're doing right now, just on Zoom or whatever. But she's like your mom, or well, or my mom, any any of our moms, the collective mm. your where she's just like looking <laughs> over the camera, you know, she's like, the camera's really far below her. And she's like, oh yeah, tell me about your moisturizer. What kind of moisturizer do you like? <laughs> and she looks like she's become like a crunchy headed, a crunchy haired yurt lady. <laughs> what is I that have to goop? say. Is it drying goop? Like what does the goop, goop do to you? You look, you look like you look dried out. Put in some I'm white a... rain. Someone send Gwyneth some white <laughs> rain. Let's just start with the basics of conditioner use. I feel like Eva Longoria is going to start up a brand called Yurt, and it's just going to be a competitor to Goop. <laughs> It'll be like Yurt by Eva Longoria. And um, I'm looking, by the way, I'm okay. I'm sorry, everyone. This has to be discussed. I have now gone and done a Google image search of Yurts, and there are a lot of these beautiful interiors, like Ronnie was saying. And I'm sorry. I am sorry. These are glamp. These are glamping Yurts. These are the 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 one the. Sorry, the Nate, Nate, and and partner of Nate. You seem like wonderful gays who I'd be friends with, but the yurt. No, you wouldn't. And neither rustic. would I, because they'd keep Your inviting us rustic. over to their fucking yurt. And it's like, oh god, Nate invited us again. We've got to go to Palm soften Springs. The blow. I was trying to no. soften the blow. <laughs> you think they have soft blows? There's no soft blows in those yurts. I'm telling you, those are hard blows because you're stuck in the middle of the desert and you just want it to be over with, and you're just blowing as hard as you can just to finish it. Okay. All I'm that saying yurt is, these place yurts is have... the land of hard blows. All I'm saying is these yurts have chairs and they have beds, and the yurts that we saw on TV, there was like blankets on the floor and pillows, which is probably authentic to like uh, like OG yurts in like 16th century Russia. But um, I feel like for glamping, <laughs> Eva right, Longoria let's... is not going to invest in you if you don't have some chairs in there, okay? Also, while we're speaking of Eva Longoria, she should come teach you guys how to do yurts and condition your hair because she's also like with Clairol <laughs> or some shit. All right, let's move on from yurts. I feel like there's a lot going on. Everybody yurts. <laughs> Sometimes. So... Um, they get to the yurt place. This is where we're at. <laughs> so um, Nate's like, oh, my God, welcome to our ranch. And Sheena goes, I'm so glad that everyone has tennis shoes on because I feel like I should be in boots or something. And I was in tennis shoes, but I was like, should I be in boots? And now that I see that everybody's in shoes, and I'm okay with that. Yeah, I feel like so much better. Like, I was like a little afraid. I'd be like an outlier with just like my tennis shoes. But like, we're all wearing tennis shoes, which is funny because like, you know, none of us even play pickleball anymore. But I guess pickleball is different from tennis. Anyway, happy yurt day. Ah! So, we have a listener who um, said, you know, thanks for your show, you guys. My husband just left me for his pickleball partner, and my life, like, sucks at the moment. And I would just like to publicly say to that woman, congratulations on getting rid of that pickleball fuck. And that should yeah. be your first clue. When your husband when your husband starts working out without you for no reason, in a yurt, and then <laughs> he just starts playing pickleball with people and you're not invited, divorce him because it's coming. I'm telling you, I learned that from yeah. that lady. We love you. Stay strong over there is the point. Yurt. It's a midlife okay. crisis sport. So, so yes. Nate introduces us to his boyfriend, Ricky. Poor Ricky never gets to say a thing. No, no. Ricky is just, Ricky is like constantly opening his mouth to say something and then the camera cuts away. Poor Ricky. And you know, he's the one back there making the homemade ranch and yeah. grilling that barbecue while Nate, it, like Nate's out front doing like, you know, high kicks and and saying, bitch, 
So yeah. like, Nate's I like, feel like you're, you're, a, you're the, you're from the hard blows. Okay. Nate, uh, Ricky, Ricky, Ricky from the hard blows. Okay. You stay back here. I'm front of house Nate. Okay. I'm front of your Nate. I'm going to take mm -hmm. care of everything. Ricky, do not say, I'm going to introduce you because it's flat. But if you say anything, I swear to God, it's back to hard blows for you. I'm getting a lot of like, um, poker face vibes from Nate and Ricky. Like, I definitely think they're the first 15 minutes of a poker face episode. <laughs> <laughs> right in the middle of fucking nowhere <laughs> natasha leone's gonna show up you know like hey i need to get into a i need to get into a yen you guys got yes. any yes for me yes you got you got like tense what is this what's what's a year it's like a ten for this round so oh, all right i'll give it a shot uh we don't have any years bullshit i mean sorry i'll work for you for three days for no good reason so i can hang around and solve a murder though <laughs> <laughs> with the random yurt murder that just happened because i'm <laughs> natasha leone so someone gets murdered everywhere i go okay so okay. um tom sandoval is doing that thing where he's like oh you're that's your boyfriend ricky okay but what's your name bro oh it's nate oh yeah good to meet you bro good to meet you <laughs> okay tom you know so uh, they have two yurts. One yurt has a king. One has two. I'm such a bull. I'm such an asshole. These these yurts have beds. <laughs> well, they have beds, but they have like they're like here's your there's one one king bed to share that's on the ground, and then two. Tw I don't know. They looked very small to they me. Looked, we saw them all too dusty. <laughs> we saw them all lying down in a yurt, and it looked fucking tiny. That's it. And the yurts are solar generated, so I guess they have electricity. Okay, I don't know. You know what? I'm like a terrible Yelp review right now. I'm one of those Yelp reviews you read where you're like, you clearly did not go to this restaurant. So take well, everything. I feel I like we plan. keep we keep promising to move past yurts, but we're refusing to move past the yurts. Like you. Well, we I thought we were done with the yurts, but then I'm reading this information I wrote down. I'm like, oh, I'm speaking out of my ass. These yurts have electricity, and they've got beds in them. So what's my problem? Because it just looked gross. It didn't look fun. They didn't look <laughs> didn't, glamorous. Having a bed not is not goopy. glamorous. Okay, you need more than the bed. We're we're lowering our standards for these people. You're right. So I think I lowered Sheena, the yurt standard so low that when I saw just a mere bed, I came. I was like, "Oh, it's nice." Sheena's like, "Well, I'm like, Raquel wants us for her birthday, then that's fine. I'm not usually a clapper, but uh, I just don't like getting dirty. I'm like you're married to Brock. Like, I know, I know. what are you fucking talking about? Of course you like getting dirty. That man, you know that man comes to bed smelling like two days ago." <laughs> So then uh Nate is like, now guys, we all I have pigs you can pet. Um, that is not a reference to your cast members. And we also have goats, and we have one fabulous albino turkey, and she really rules the roost because there's that one turkey that's just strutting around like an old gay theater queen, you know, who's like, Oh, well, yes, I remember. I remember going to the Stardust Lounge with Burnett Peters in 1982. And let me tell you something. <laughs> She was a delight. Well, that's where turkeys go to retire too, apparently, in Palm Springs. <laughs> that's true. That's also you know, all those other all those animals are sick and tired of the burned up Peter story. They have to hear it every single time from that turkey. And my mom said I'd never go past Oklahoma. <laughs> but here I am, still here. I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> Brooke, uh, Brock is like, Raquel, this is a real life animal crossing for you. <laughs> so, I hope all you animal crossing players are proud. Raquel is one of you. I know. I had mixed emotions about that. Yeah. I like the reference. I like the shout out. I didn't like the association. Yeah. So, Raquel's very happy. And then, um, Schwartz is like, So, like, like, where do I pee? And Sandoval's like, dude, you can pee, like, anywhere. And then Schwartz is, like, looking around the desert and just, like, looking at different containers that he can pee into and, like, so excited. But He's into Bill Schwartz like, form kind of paralyzed I like paralyzed that they said the too. three cornhole setups. That was funny. <laughs> like, with the dream things around it. So much for glamping. Yeah. So then Nate's like, you guys ready for critters? Oh, great, Nate. So we get to come pay you money for glamping, and then we get to feed your pets, too. <laughs> <laughs> like free house sitting for fucking Nate over there. Yeah. So, yeah, they're like, there's like a very sad pig that's just like, oh, God, more humans. And all, okay, I'm going to get on my side, pet me, enjoy. And then like some ducks are running around. It's like a little, it's a cute little petting farm, I guess. It is cute, or as I like to call them, pet prisons. Fuck, mm. you think they want to be out there in fucking Palm Springs weather? Nobody <laughs> wants to be out there. That's crazy. They're big, like, fuck these turkey. guys. <laughs> that turkey is ready for snow. It is like, I am camouflaged for snow. 
<laughs> not meant for this dusty hell hole. I now have to call home. Oh um, my they're, talk- they're talking about the uh turkey balls. And um Ariana's like, Whoa, those turkey balls remind me of your balls, Tom. And he's like, Shut up, dude. My balls do not look like that, bro. And Schwartz <laughs> is like, Yeah, they do. I mean, I wouldn't know, but he goes, Your balls look like that. He goes, yeah, I know. My balls are really nice. Your balls are really nice, bro. Huh? <laughs> you got like turkey balls. So then, um, yeah, now just it's time- a thought. Now, don't you think every time you see them, like of all the threesomes that they've had together, because that's basically what this episode turned all of this into, right? Is that this episode is like, oh, so it was a threesome with the Toms, and and Lala even <laughs> says it later. Like this went beyond being just Schwartz and. Raquel, now it's Schwartz and Sandoval and Raquel, or Vanderbilt right. says that later. And, um, oh, what a gross pair to have in a threesome. Ugh. Yeah. We have a gross pair of turkey balls or a gross pair of guys or both. Really, all well, of both. Us. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, now it's time to feed the animals. They all have pumpkins that they have to like smash on the ground. Brock, of course, like pulverizes his. He's like, <laughs> he like crashes his. And Ariana, Ariana does what I would do, which is throw her pumpkin down on the ground and just like bounces and rolls away <laughs> like i'm weak <laughs> uh so they feed the farm animals which is basically what this audience has been doing for a decade so i was gonna was say nice this to is see. like going to sir you know yeah <laughs> this is <laughs> service is slightly better i would say um so now we go to lala's news office which is funny in concept and then uh she's setting up all her merch and uh james comes over my jameson's and uh, he's like, hello, he looks wonderful in here. She's I know, cute, right? <laughs> I'm like, it's just like an empty room with three of your books stacked up, but sure. So she's going to have a robe shoot today because she's got a new robe coming. Give up the robes. <laughs> um, and they've got hoods. <laughs> so she, she wants to let us know. She's like, oh, and by the way, they've got hoods. <laughs> so she asks him how he is. And he's like, well, my beach day didn't really go to plan, did it? <laughs> didn't go to plan. And she's like, well, listen, I didn't love the throwings of the drinks, but I'm just looking at Schwartz, and it's, like, so embarrassing. And don't mm-hmm. even get me started on Sandoval's. By the way, you know that Raquel slept at Sandoval's that night, right? And Joe's like, how do you know about this? She goes, well, Cause, because Katie called me last night. He's like, oh, and- Katie knows. And then we see a black and white TV cam footage, and it's like, rewind. <laughs> And Lala's like, so let's get this straight. A few days ago, Katie was at TV. At, she was at Villa Rosa's working on sandwiches with Chef Penny while Ariana was back home at her grandmother's funeral. So we cut to LVP's uh, kitchen and Katie's cutting her bread and slicing, her pub guavera beret. Like slice, <laughs> yeah, she's like slicing a tomato. Chef Penny making a return appearance after many years. Very excited to see Chef Penny, our, the sexy chef on Food Network Star. Because uh, she's very inventive, you know. Chef <laughs> Penny has invented a lot of things. She invented a lot of things for the first time for the sir and the pump menus. Remember when she yeah. invented salmon? Yeah, exactly. And it looks like here she's inventing sandwiches. Uh, this is basically Chef Penny is like, okay, I'll design you some sandwiches, Katie, and you can say that you made them. So uh, well, yeah, you so- call in a pro, you know. I mean, I think it's smart that they're doing that because last week I was saying I don't want a sandwich from somebody who doesn't eat bread um or sandwiches uh sorry ariana that's true so i think it's smart when you call people in you know you call the professionals in like what am i gonna clean out my own air conditioning filter no i'm not and you know what i am i was happy because i've been saying listen this i'm all for this concept but when you guys can start like attempting to make a sandwich and now we are finally seeing a tomato being sliced so we're on our way and so uh lala's like So they're testing sandwiches when Ken walks out and drops the mother of all gossip bombs. (laughs) And Uh, Ken, (laughs) Ken just does drive by spilling of the tea. You know, people get mad at LVP for being so manipulative, but look what she brings to the shows, you know? Mm -hmm. And yes, her team of players are getting a little bit rusty, but Ken's like 90,000 years old, okay? Give the guy a break. But the woman knows how to keep a show moving, okay? So Ken... (laughs) Chef Penny will be there. So right when you hear her claim to have invented the pitta, come in and drop the tea. So he comes in and he's like, uh, I can't believe that uh, Sondival had Raquel over. 
I know, Ken, I know. While Ariana's away. I know, Ken, I know. In the jacuzzi as well. Mm. I know, Ken. And she stayed over all night. Yeah. Did I do it? <laughs> she gives him like a little <laughs> cookie and smacks him <laughs> on the butt. And then he just walks away. He gets the dog. He's like, all right, mushy and pushy and flushy. Let's go. Yeah, it's so... like, rookie, floofy, <laughs> ricky, loofa, wheela, bella, kitty, dog. Come on, dogs. This goes up. So Katie's like, how does he know this? And he goes, oh, I told him earlier. And then I said, come back in here and say it out loud in front of the cameras. And so so uh, Katie's like, well, then how do you know? She goes, oh, well, Raquel was late. Because she was hung over. That's my rewind sound. So then Lala is like, the days before Lisa's doing a tasting for the new menu at Sirs. Oh, now you're going to do a new menu at Sir? Since the fuck <laughs> when do you come out with new menus? Uh, when Raquel rolls up an hour and a half late. Which so Lisa- is also just the premise of this is so funny because Lisa's having a tasting menu with only Charlie and Raquel and Guillermo <laughs> and Diana. They're and the only two employees that weren't being invited to this tasting menu. It was so bizarre. And Lisa, Guillermo, and Natalie are sitting at a table like they're American Idol judges. And I guess Charlie is there too. She's on an edge. And Raquel comes in, does her like her wave by her hip thing like, Hi, I'm sorry. I'm so yes. sorry. I'm late. I'm like Raquel. If you're trying to cover up a, uh, um, an affair, here's what not to do: don't show up an hour and a half late because of your affair. <laughs> on yeah, camera. and then the way she stands, she like puts one foot in front of the other and just like hands on hip poses. She's like, "Hi, sorry guys. <laughs> like you aged out of that. Can we just drop the beauty queen thing, please? It's embarrassing." <laughs> You were, so, you were, the bylaws say you are no longer allowed to make that stance. Okay. You are too old for that stance. Yeah. Please put down the boogie board and just come to work on time. So LVP's like, why are you late? Sit down and tell me why you're late. We were trying to figure out what we were going to do about these goat cheese empanadas and we could have used your input, Raquel. <laughs> oh, I told Chef Joe if only there were one more person here, we could finally put that cabbage soup on the menu. But alas, <laughs> the window closed. So uh, Raquel's like, I overslept. And I overslept. Like, how would you even tell your boss that? Yes, of course, this is contrived for a show. But like, would you, if you show up 90 minutes late, you're going to say, I overslept. No, At that you point, blew a tire. You got robbed. Yeah. You fucking mm-hmm. got, you got carjacked. Something. Uh-huh. Come on. Yeah, exactly. So Raquel's like, um, well, I stayed up late and I went back to Tom's place and we went in the jacuzzi with Schwartz. I'm like, stop giving the details to your boss. This is making your case worse. But thank you. Because now we have something to talk about. What an idiot. God, this is definitely a person you don't commit a crime with. What a yes. fucking idiot. Oh, and by the way, Ronnie, what I was going to say is, you know what I was happy about with this episode? This is finally the episode where I really feel like um, I can synchronize like my current day opinions with my opinions of what's happening on the show. Like all season long, I feel like the show has sort of painted Raquel as like an underdog, almost a hero. And now finally I'm like, okay, good. Now present day Ben can be fully synced with what the show is presenting me. Oh yeah, now she's a goddamn monster for sure. <laughs> now she's now Raquel is the worst. M- Raquel is the worst and um uh, she just put that post up kind of weaponizing, you know, as people often do on reality shows and in real life, whenever you get in trouble you start using victim language and you know that's my like my least favorite thing in the world that people do. And uh, Raquel started yesterday because she knew this episode was coming out where she's finally the villain. And we see how bad this stuff actually was, because this is really bad, guys. This is a, yeah. So Raquel puts out this post. This account was hacked. And with the help of Instagram, it has been reset and is now managed by Raquel's team for the next month while she continues treatment. May is Mental Health Awareness Month. So Raquel, Raquel has requested all of the posts focusing on raising awareness for mental health. Be allowed while all others are not. You don't get to hide behind that. I'm sorry. I'm sure it is very depressing having the world hate your guts. But, you know, stop doing hateable things, okay? Yeah. I don't feel for you, lady. And stop using mental health as some fucking excuse and some weapon that people can't come after you and call you a dirty, terrible friend because we get to. Sorry. Yeah. You open the door, okay? Yeah, look, look. I don't want Raquel to harm herself over this stupid scandal, but uh, but also at the same time, I always like, wondered why you, you have kept to take saying the... that because this is not your first time of saying that. But I, you told me recently that that happened on Love Island, and I was like, oh, yeah, so no, that I think actually it's... has happened. I was yeah, like, like, man, where are you I'm going very... to that place? It's so dark. 
No, it happens. Like, I mean, look, I do still think she's like a very fragile person. And I think that like having the entire nation hate you is hard. We literally like had like, we have like 40 people who are like, we didn't like the way you talked about Caden episode. And I was like, guys, I'm retiring from the world. But so <laughs> it's hard. And so like, I don't want her to harm herself. I really, really don't. I do think though that she has to, you know, like she, like she participated in something that was very hurtful and terrible. And like, you can't hide behind memes or whatever, but I don't want her herself. Don't also want her to um, use these, these Instagram posts as a get out of jail free card. Also, I think she was seen getting a pizza with Tom two days ago. So whatever, but okay. <laughs> I support that. I support pizza. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't want you to hurt yourself, but I do want you to become a carb addict. Okay. That, yeah. I think, I think in the end that would really be the perfect karma for all of this. It's a mental health pizza. Although isn't that all pizza to be honest. So, um, so she's telling Lisa that she, she spent the night. Okay. Uh, at Sandoval's and Lisa gives us like, like, Oh, and Raquel's like, nothing happened, though. I mean, it's not like dot, dot, dot. She goes, oh, it doesn't matter if nothing happened. There were no cameras. Are you crazy? Why would you do that? It's it just matters the that, that you were there. were there and Guillermo nor Diana nor Charlie knew. How are we supposed to know what to put on the menu if we didn't know if we were there in the jacuzzi with you and Tom and Tom? And she's like, yeah, it doesn't matter if nothing happened. You were there, babe. And Raquel's like, I know what it looks like. I know it was just easier to sleep on the couch and stay the night. And Lala's like, um, and you all know Lisa. She can snip bullshit from a mile away. So first, she calls Santa Claus. Why? Do we get an answer to this? Why is Raquel offering up all this information in the first place? Because she's, she's not smart. Okay. <laughs> She's a really... You don't live with anybody from the cast. Just say you went. Why doesn't everybody I... just say you went home? Yeah. And also this group, they are, I think that like Schwartz, Sandoval, and Raquel think that if they are so obvious and clumsy with their stories, that no one would ever believe that anything's going on. Because last week, Schwartz was the one who said, I think that Raquel is developing a crush on someone it's almost like well he would never say that if he knew what was going on he would cover for his friend for if he knew so they're trying to do like reverse logic but i think it's just everyone's like mm, this is fishy i think that they think like reality star people and they're thinking of every little thing as a storyline which kind of grosses me out even more because i feel like tom and tom are purposely trying to push this we had we're having three cents with raquel storyline as like their thing because like they're aging Tom really looks methy. I'm sorry. Like, if anybody's he's seen recent bad. pictures of him, yeah. he's looking really bad. Something's wrong. Uh, this guy, Schwartz, hasn't looked good, f- you know, for years. And I think that the I think that they're like getting off on making everybody think that they had a threesome with this girl, and they're just telling Raquel, go out there and say this. Go out there, and she's just showing up. Like, here's what happened. We were in a jacuzzi together, and then I stayed <laughs> with. So like, oh, <laughs> yeah. I know it looks bad, but it was easier to sleep on the couch than to get an Uber and drive two minutes to my home. So I stayed the night. And then both Toms are laughing, right? So look, look, because look, hell, LVP calls the boys and she's like, hello, I'm calling you because Raquel has just shown up here an hour and a half late looking like a bag of shit empanadas, real ones without (laughs) goat cheese in them. And she says that she got wasted last night and had to spend the night at your house. And they're like, ha, 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 ha. They're laughing. And she's like, stop laughing, both of you. Dude, like we hung out for like a little bit, and then she like literally dipped out. Like, it, you know, like I don't know, well, I don't know. Like, she actually left, left early, you know, because like she was dipping out. Like, you know what it was like? She was like um spinach and artichoke, you know, dip that you put outside because it was like dipping out as opposed to dipping inside. She was dipping out. You know what I'm saying, dude? And he actually says, "Yeah, I don't know why she left early." And LVP's like, hold on a second. So she didn't spend the night. I said she dipped out, which is true. She did dip out, okay? Just what does dip out mean? It's when you like put your honey mustard on the table and then you just like (laughs) drag a chicken nugget (laughs) over it. Dip out. Uh, And then uh, we we go back to like, we're going like, we're going back and forth in time right now. Cause now we're back to Katie and LVP is still saying, what is dipped out? And Katie goes, Dipped out means that she left. And Chef Penny goes, 
She laughed. She laughed. It's like, oh, shit, Penny is weighing in now. Penny goes, she bolted. And LVP is <laughs> like, no, wait, she did stay the night. Is that what they're saying? Because she didn't dip. She didn't leave. She stayed the night. So then we rewind back to LVP on the phone. And she's like, so did she spend the night at your house? Well, look, I mean, yes or no, Tom? Yes, but dude, I'm not dude. I'm not dude. I am a partner of Nicolaine. How dare you? <laughs> Dude, I have people crash at my house like all the time because I am not dude. All right, Lisa, I have people crash at my house all the time. It happens. So when I say she dipped out, I mean, she dipped in. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so she's like, she's not people. She's not just people. Your wife's away. And she's a beautiful single girl who's aged out of pageantry. I know. I'm just over this whole Schwarzenegger cow thing. <sighs> Like where he gets too mad and like flicks his hair back, like makes that look like I'm so mad right now. Like, petulant child, you know, and he's like, and so Schwartz goes, oh, it's not a thing actually. And Schwartz and he says like, no, it's not Schwartz and Raquel. That was so last week. It was literally last week's episode. Now it's Schwartz and Sandoval and Raquel thing. Just sort of like how Lisa Vanderpump and Nicolene are a thing together, a brand you can buy. Elaine by Vanderpump. He's like, dude, come on, man. So then we go to Lala and James in the office still talking. And James is like, so yesterday I went to a smoking lounge with Sandoval. And it was basically like a members only smoking lounge. And he told me they were in the jacuzzi for a little bit. You know, oh, listen, all I cared about, I was like, where's the collar on this jacket? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, why would we have to wear these just to smoke? You know what I mean? So it's like, focus, James. We're trying so to ruin reputations, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so Sandoval is basically like, so dude, let me tell you what happened. So like we grabbed some beers and like jumped in my hot tub for a bit. And then Raquel, guess what she did? Wait for it. She dipped, dipped out. out, bro. Yeah. She dipped <laughs> out, dude. So like, obviously like Schwartz and Raquel spent the night and like their dogs were like there and like whatever. And Jim's like, what? Oh, I thought you said that Raquel left. No, no, no I... she dipped out like she went to bed. I was like, okay, <laughs> okay, Tom, because Is before it... you said dipped out meant she left. You specifically said that. I think I get it. I think I get it. Because, you know, when you go swimming, you say I'm going to go take a dip. So when you leave the pool, you, if, ta if going into the pool is taking a dip, leaving the pool is dipping out. So she got out of the pool, dude. That's what it means now. Dipping out means getting out of the pool. And he, he's so bad at this. He goes, no, she dipped out like she went to bed in my room. Oh, I mean, not in my room, but like my guest room. <laughs> so, my guest room. Like, worst criminals ever. Worst. Like, no, I mean, like we had sex. No, I'm, I meant like, no, like she went and went to sleep in a separate room in a separate Dude, house. This is like an episode of this is like a season of Fargo. Because you know how Fargo is just about <laughs> the dumbest criminals to ever live. Yeah. Oh my God, that's exact. This it feels like Reno nine one one actually. <laughs> it's just like, is this a parody? So, so then, uh, Lala, Sandoval, go take a degenerate ass elsewhere. You're a mess. We're at a barbecue the over Labor Days, and your girlfriend is at home because of her dead grandmother. <laughs> and then we see rewind. Blah, 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 blah. Sheena's vlog footage. Are you vlogging this? <laughs> yeah, baby, got it, got it. All right, all right, get it. Get Lala twerking like a white girl. So Lala's like twerking. Um, I'm going to need everyone here at this cool ass barbecue to sign a release to be on my vlog. Thank you. So the was like the dope labor party, labor stay party. And there was a ton of people. Sheena's, Brock's, Raquel's, Santa Claus, Summer Moon. <laughs> Everyone's was theirs. <laughs> so then now we go back to Lala, Katie and Lisa at a restaurant. So by the way, OK, this is making me feel like. No, none of this. This was totally shot up the fact because I think there these were like little parts of scenes and these scenes were probably meant for like something else or whatever. And they realized, oh, shit, we have all this stuff. We have to sort of like weave it together with this Lala thing. So now Lala, Katie and Lisa are at a restaurant and Lala's like, so the days that Ariana's grandmother dies, Tom Sandoval came to the barbecue and I was I was at Newport and Ariana was calling him furious. He was like, OK, I'll come home right now. And he was there for two more hours and he was with Kel all day long 
And then we fast forward again, and Lala's like, Sandoval and Raquel were dancing alone at the Abbey. Then Sandoval at a Labor Day party with Raquel and Ariana and just found out her grandmother died. And Raquel spends the night at Sandoval's house while Ariana out of town. This leads me to only one logical conclusion. I'm marrying a man with no neck who is rumored <laughs> to be based uh, the character Turtle on Entourage. It's like, okay, don't don't try to convince me that you have logic now. Okay, too this, late. This leads me to one logical conclusion. Everyone should buy a Give Them La La Robes. Available now on my web shop for $29.99. They have hoods. So, <laughs> so La La is telling James, uh, I think Santa Pops has a thing for Raquel. And James is like, damn. She goes, yeah. And for Kals, once she has a little too much to drink, because of course Raquel is going to now act like, uh, uh, Lala is going to now act, act like Raquel stole her man in Vegas again, you know? Because yeah. it's all hooks up with everything that Lala has been cooking up this whole time. Like, she stole my manse in the first place. And James is like, well, if Tom is banging Raquel, it's just, uh, I can't even finish the sentence. And Lala goes, the last time that Sandovalsk was talking about a woman the way he talks about Raquelsk was when he was talking about Ariana to the group when he was with Kristen. I was like, you mean before you were even in this group and you're just basing it off the TV show, but like, but you're right. But, but not still. a bad point, you know. That's another... <laughs> you're right. But by the way, you weren't here for that, but you're right. This is this is one of those episodes <laughs> where no matter how much Lala makes you crazy or not, this is definitely an episode where you're like, yep, well, she's got, you know, she's Yeah, I mean, she's, this she's Lala right. Redemption episode, I mean, like all season long, <laughs> she's drive, driving me nuts. This, this episode, I was like, well, you know, I mean, hey, I guess I'm a Lala fan again. <laughs> At least someone's paying the fuck attention over there. I don't so mind. Then I don't we, mind a pivot. <laughs> we cut to a clip of... Tom and Jax in the smoking alley at Sir, which I love. I forgot that the smoking alley is they smoke right next to all those cans of propane. <laughs> I mean, that always just killed me. So they're standing there next to the propane, and um, Tom's being over dramatic yelling. He looks, by the way, like 40 years younger here. And he's like, I would just love to say to Kristen, you know what? We did it. Yeah. But you know what? Nothing happened between us. <laughs> and then we get the clip again of like, yes. Ariana and I kissed once three years ago at the pool at the Golden Nugget. And Stasi again going, the Golden, the golden Nugget. nugget. <laughs> They're just going to keep airing <laughs> that clip over and over again because they know that somewhere Stasi is watching it and be like, I am reliving my horror at the Golden Nugget every single week on Bravo. So then we cut back to James and Lala. It's like, Tom and Ariana don't like focus on their relationships. And James says, yeah, but, well, you know, but maybe that distance, you know, maybe that distance they've got, like, works for them or something. She goes, no. I mean, do you really think that? And he goes, yeah. She goes, no. <laughs> something ain't right. And I think something's going on. And I'm going to call it sk like I see it. Sk and James is like, so do we get to talk about my life-changing gig for Cascade last weekend? Or are we just never going to talk about that on this show? No? And they're going to bring okay. that up again, huh? So then we go to Come On Ya Desert, and Raquel's like, uh, she runs out of the tent. She goes, wait, you guys, I forgot my makeup bag. Are you <laughs> kidding me? It's very Schwartz-like. Sheena's like, um, so Raquel, how does it feel to be the only person here in your 20s still? <laughs> and Raquel's like, I love being the youngest. Um, So they make a toast. Raquel makes a toast to being surrounded by good friends and good vibes. And this is exactly what she wanted to do for her birthday. And she's like, I feel like these are my true core people. These are my true friends. These are the people that are looking out for me that mean everything to me. Well, the balls then on why this are you? What the hell? <laughs> what why the fuck are is you wrong with you? <laughs> that girl's husband, boyfriend, partner. What are, you doing? what are you doing? What are you doing? You know, I still blame Sandoval more. But, like, don't be making speeches like this. You know, like, this is ridiculous. Well, it's scary because I, first of all, I don't know that I'm a good judge of character. Here's what I know. I'm a judge of character, okay? Obviously, mm. I'm very judgy. And I can usually sniff people out a little bit better. And Raquel, I've always said, Raquel doesn't seem like she's thirsty to be on the show. She just seemed like, 
I mean, I've said this a million times on the show. She was just hanging out trying to keep warm by the pizza oven DJ stand. You know, I never mm -hmm. really got any impression that she was like really trying to make a splash and steal. And I just don't I just don't get the impression that like I would never guess in a million years that she really fucked the Toms. Even watching this episode, I'm still thinking like, so they can't have fucked yet. Right. Right. Like she's acting She's so good, she's, but she's well, such an awkward person. She seems like she'd be a terrible actor, but she also may be just like not very bright and not realizing like, um, hey, you have are like betraying your best friend's trust right now. And you don't realize that by ma making the speech that it's just so craven and terrible of you. I just don't get it. It is it is it is I'm watching it and I'm like, I don't understand how people could do this. Well, I'm interested to see. But this is, that's what the show does. One thing we have not heard, and it's very hard to surprise people who watch this show because we've heard everything, right? The Scandal stuff came out months ago now. So we already know what's coming. We know every little twist and turn. At least we think we do. One thing we have not heard is her side. We have no idea what her side is. So what is it? I mean, I'm so curious. Like, did Tom tell you he was in an open relationship? Is that where you're coming from? Where you he told you that don't worry, like we have a don't don't say it and don't pay it kind of a relationship. Like if you don't find out, it's okay. What is she thinking? Because she's really believably I just not think giving it's so a insulting. Fuck. I just think it's really insulting that like you know she is participating in this affair while saying this saying this this totally insincere although i actually think she believes it i think she believes it but i just think it's really well insulting. that's what i'm saying the affair is I, insulting comes... but this is the affair is the most insulting part but then also saying this is almost like rubbing salt in the wound and and, and ariana it's you know it's, it's making ariana look like a total fool you know i think that's why it's so obnoxious so Anyway, so Ariana starts talking about her grandmother and how hard it was going home and not seeing her. And so she starts crying and Brock's like, she's here with you, mate. She's here with you. And she made her own ranch. Hey, hold on there. All right. We're <laughs> having a serious scene here. And then um, we cut to Sandoval, who's just going like this with his face, pretending to cry. It's like, right. not crying. No one wipes their tears like that anyway. He's just like flopping his eye. Like, <laughs> I know. Seriously. Licking it off, especially, especially not in a sandy area. So Ariana, Ariana's basically saying how it's been a, such a tough year with her grandma, with Charlotte, and she's just not doing well, and she's like barely holding on by a thread, to be honest. And uh, and then she, um, Ariana's like, so by the way, did anything happen while I was out of town? And Raquel's like, oh, there was a food tasting for the new menu, at sir. I was an hour and thirty minutes late because. Funny story the night before. Okay, dude. Basically, she dipped out. She dipped out. That's all we gotta know. Send the story. She dipped out. And Schwartz is like, I hear you look like a bag of shit. <laughs> and so Sandoval tells us, after beach day, Schwartz, Raquel, and I hopped in my car, back to my house, jumped in the jacuzzi, and listened to music. Okay? And then Raquel's like, yeah, we went into the jacuzzi after we went out, and Ariana's like, yeah, which is something we always do. It's like Ariana is actually pushing her along to get her lines out, which is making yeah. me even crazier because you know this means Ariana and Tom have already had this discussion where Tom's like, everyone's trying to make this sound bad, but it's not bad. You know, Raquel spent the night a million times. What's the big deal? So yeah, Ariana's because... like, okay, so this we always do that. It's not a big deal. Just get out your lines, okay? Yeah, because of course Ariana has gone through the witches of WeHo. She's suffered through that, where like any small thing was whipped into a giant frenzy. So she's just like trying to like reassert, like there's nothing crazy about friends going to jacuzzi together. But little does she realize. So Raquel is like, yeah, and I stayed the night and I slept on the couch and Sandoz like yeah I'm like dude go upstairs go to the guest room and but she's like curled up on the couch which is funny because you also told Lisa that she was in the guest room but now she's on the couch so I think he because he's getting caught in so many lies he must have told somebody already yeah she stayed over but she slept on the couch or did Raquel say she slept on the couch? Someone already said that she slept. Raquel on the couch. said so Raquel they had said to I slept start on it couch. on the couch, and then they had to move it. And then I said to go to go to the. Couch. I'm like, where's Kira Sedgwick? Because she she just would like just finish this right now. So Sheena's like, well, um, she's Broxen? working at pump now. 
Sorry, but she Pump is. closed. You know that, right? So she's the closer. Drew said, yeah. she's like, I'm the closer. I'm here to tell Pump. It's it's up for right now. Sorry. So she was like, um, Brock said you guys lied and said like she didn't say the night. And Schwartz was like, oh, yeah, well, um, because of optics. Yeah. So now we have another flashback of Sandoval and with Brock and Peter after like the playing basketball or something. And Sandoval's like, yeah, dude, all that happens is that like we came back. Raquel grabbed Graham and guess what? Guess what she did? I'll give you a hint. It starts with a D. It ends with a now. She dipped out. She dipped out, dude. She dipped out. And Brock's like, wait a minute. So who stayed over? She went home? And he goes, yeah. And Schwartz is like, I stayed. We had a little slumber party. So he just flat out lied to them, right? Right. So then Sandoval's like, yeah, on the heels of the open relationship rumor and obviously Schwartz making out with Raquel in Mexico, like, we just thought it would be better if everyone didn't know that little detail. What's the big deal? Like, the funny thing is, I wasn't even lying. Like, she went and passed out. So that's what I meant by dipped out. It was like, dipped out. It's the same <laughs> as passing out. It's like she dipped out of consciousness. That's what I meant. <laughs> I was fully going to tell Ariana, like, oh, you shouldn't just told the truth. I'm so stupid. Huh? So, by the way, this is a classic criminal thing to do or like or liar thing to do, which is admit a small lie. So that way you look like a generally truthful person, but you still lie about the big thing. But the small lie admission builds trust somehow. So then Brock's like, well, you didn't help yourself, did you? And mm -hmm. Schwartz is like, yeah, we just made it worse. Boys will be boys. Broken clocks are right two times a day. And they're like, ha, 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 boys will ha, be boys. Ha, 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 ha. And Raquel is just sitting there smiling, doing a squint smile like, mm-hmm. <laughs> I hate all of you. Okay? <laughs> I hate all of your guts. You're all a bunch of crooks. Yeah. <laughs> so now um, now it's time for the give them Lala bathrobe photo shoot in Woodland Hills. Guys. So um, Katie, the girls are in hair and makeup. Christina's there, Katie's there. Uh, they have they have robes. And uh Lala's like, I am so proud of to like of give them Lala. Like it's really what I rely on to support my daughters. And like my kids, like they want to go to college some days. Okay. And this is what's gonna center my robe empires. Okay. So don't make fun of it, Schwartz. So they pose uh in front, they've rented a house, so they're like posing in the hills. And um, Kate, it's Katie who's reading the newspaper, right? She I has like the LA Times too. out. But she's We're... like standing there awkwardly with the paper open. Like, here I am standing up outside reading a newspaper. <laughs> no. I was like, God, Lala. It's guys and Dolls? Are you like an extra on Guys and Dolls right now? Lala, <laughs> we know give, we know you, like your personality, right? From the show. And um, we know your vibe. And we know what Give Them Lala is. Are you telling me your vibe is Katie and Christina reading a newspaper? <laughs> Since when? They need Maybe to get just, some new people on this show for Lala to be <laughs> evil with because those two just ain't gonna cut it. Maybe it was the print edition of Pucker and Pout. So um now the girls so they're hanging out after their photo shoot, and Christina's like, So um, what did the Don and Satchel think about the other night? And Katie's like, oh, Satchel like couldn't understand why everyone was so mean to me. And Katie's oh, like, well. <laughs> <laughs> I think there are a lot of things Satchel couldn't figure out. Yeah. So uh Christina's like that night, the things that were they were saying were like so disgusting. And I generally think they wake up and they don't go, hmm, I shouldn't have said that. They're just disgusting pigs. And I will be inviting them to my party. <laughs> yeah. And Lala's like, oh, yeah, they meant everything that they said. And Katie says, no, it's like this vitriol coming at you. And then Sandoval came to me and told me to take accountability. And then we see a clip of Tom getting too angry, being like, you need to not date people for who they could be, but date them for who they are. Trademark Dr. Laura, thank you very much. And she's like, shut up, bitch. Like her trying to. <laughs> bitch get alive or whatever she said so then we're yeah. back and Katie's like he's so hell-bent on believing I'm spreading this rumor about him having an open relationship yeah and Lolly goes it's not that far-fetched okay like I hooked up with Ariana in the back of the car while he drove okay and had we been in a bedroom he probably would have participated it's not that far-fetched <laughs> and she's like but I don't even it doesn't even matter I never said that so why are they trying to pin it on me and um, Lala's like, yeah, well, it's with them. 
it's out there. Oh, she's like, but it's out there. And they think that you said it. So let's break it down. Really? He could have done it. Yeah. And uh, Lala's like, you know, something don't smell right with Raquel and the Sandoval relationship. And I know better than anyone that when you have a dude who's your best friend, who's there during your best, like during your worst times. Okay. And then you add alcohol you end up sitting on their face. <laughs> now that's your brand. <laughs> now that's what I need. I need that monologue on the back of the room. Okay, boom, sold. That's you. So it's, then, uh, talk Christina, about guys and dolls. It's a variation of a girl could get a little cold or whatever. It's like a girl could sit on a face. So Christina's like, well, guys, I want to do a spring party in the back of. Tom Tom because I have spring products coming out and I think it's going to be really fun and I think that we can have some drinks and hang out and That'd talk about so my new nice. lemon scrub. I love a lemon scrub. I can love my mom lemon come? scrub. Oh my can God, we can I bring my love mom? love that. Oh I, God, yeah, I wish everybody could bring their mom. We, maybe we'll so invite fun. all the moms. You know yeah. what mom's like? What? Scrub. I oh just God, like, to, I just like scrub. to like take your mom's shirt off and just scrub her back down. Do you think there'll be tea towels? Oh my god, I love tea towels. I love a tea towel. They're so you know what? I'm a tea towel person. Me too. We're like girl bosses right now. Girl bosses like, right now. We I make have a money, scrub. money, money. You're making yeah. tea towel sandwiches. Lala's yeah. making sit on my face robes. Girl boss. This is women supporting women. <laughs> <laughs> so then we go over to the desert and come on you desert. And Sheena's like, uh, let's go check out the other yurt. I wanna get a video from my vlog. Okay, are you vlogging moms? Yes, I'm vlogging, I'm vlogging this, all right? So she goes in with Ariana, and they start talking. So Ariana's like, okay, now you can tell me about Beach Day. Now someone else can tell me their version of this fucking Beach Day. So go ahead. Oh, okay. Well, James and Schwartz were, like, fighting. And then, like, James is like, how dare you, like, bring up my engagement? And then, like, but then we went to a bar after, which was, like, a nice bar, but it wasn't cool as, as cool as the bar I went to the other day where there was, like, free sco 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 ball Mondays. And there were, like, tacos, and I had, like, a single taco. But anyway, so Katie's, like, sitting there. And then, like, Sandoval, like, confronts her about, like, the open relationship rumor. And it was just like, um, no one here is getting anywhere anytime soon. So, ha! Yeah, because Ali told me the other day that Katie insinuated that you were in a relationship that was all bomb. And Ariana's like, well, we don't have that kind of relationship. Not to knock on people that do. Yeah, because I was like, even if they did, like, it's so fucked up that you just told someone's private business, Katie. And she goes, well, she did text me that day. And we see the text from Katie. And Katie's like, I don't know why this is spinning out of control. I didn't say anything. Jesus. And so Ariana's like, do I want to believe it? Of course. Do I believe that she would say it? Of course I believe she said it because she hates Raquel. But Raquel is just sweet. Raquel is kind. And Raquel is loyal and just a, day, uh, just a delight since the day I met her. So that's all I've got to say about Raquel. And it's like, oh, God, you really can never trust anybody, can you? I know. Gosh, it's just like heartbreaking. And Ariana, the scene ends with Ariana saying, well, we'll find out, won't we? Oh. So now it's nighttime, nighttime at the ranch. And uh, Nate and Ricky have set up some barbecue food. And this is where Nate's like, it's dinner time, bitches. I'll have a taco. No, there's no taco here. Um, And where's the skee ball? You're not in that food <laughs> hall, bitch. Uh... Do you have any darts? Good, because I hate darts. <laughs> I hate those like that, that was a trick question. So Brock like, and I are okay. going to be on yurt hunters. Yeah, that's why we're looking at your yurts. Mm. So they are, uh, yeah, they're, they have homemade ranch dressing. And then um, I would like a yurt closer to ski ball. So that's what, <laughs> that's where we're different. Brock wants a yurt um, further away from child support. And I would like a yurt closer to ski ball. So dun, 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 dun. I think we made our decision. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, they are so happy about this homemade ranch, and Raquel picks it up and promptly spills it everywhere. So that was great. And then uh, when she spills it, she goes, the homemade ranch! So then um, Raquel's Stupid like, Stupid Raquel hey. spills a homemade ranch, and poor Ricky can't even call her a dumb hooker because he's not allowed to speak. But you know that yeah. Ricky's like, I just spent all day on that homemade ranch, god damn it. <laughs> So Raquel, um, Raquel, they're eating and Raquel's like, hey, Sandoval, you got something on your face. And it's like glitter. And Schwartz goes, that's such a red flag. If you have glitter on your face as a dude, it's like Schwartz is, is Schwartz just like trying to blow up Sandoval's spot. Is that, this is, is this what he's doing or is this the reverse psychology theory? What is happening with Schwartz? I don't know. I can't tell. 
I think that he's making fun. I think he's teasing him. Like we both know you're fucking this girl. Now I'm just yeah. going to tease you. Like I'm going to, like I'm going to say it in front of her. Like they both think it's hilarious, you know? Yeah. And Ariana's like, yeah. Cause we come in touch with so much glitter all the time. And Raquel goes, Ow! like what Raquel? She's like, I bit my lip. Stupid Raquel. And then that last night after I watched this, I bit my lip. I was like, I've been cursed by Raquel. I hate her even more. She possessed my teeth. And I noticed I didn't call her an idiot because I'm constantly biting my, I mean, like, my tongue's too big for my mouth. We all know that. Like you, you hear me talk, but I bite my tongue constantly. I bite my mouth all the time. Yeah. I'm in the, I'm in the post uh, mouth bite phase right now where it's swollen up a little bit. So now I'm biting it more, like it's more prone to be bitten. It's like the worst. So, um, Schwartz is like, that's only going to exacerbate her taste for blood. I don't want to kill the vibe, but Raquel has a type. So Brock, Tom, be careful tonight. And they all start laughing. And Raquel's like, what? What? A type for what? Blood? A type for blood? Men who are taken, dummy. He goes, oh, I thought you were talking about vampire status. And Ariana's like, oh, the little squirrel. Sorry, I got distracted. Ariana's like, Okay, um, you guys are being stupid. So Raquel, what was your peach of 27 and what was your pit? So Raquel's like, um, I'm not sure if I understand the question, but um, the peach was probably a peach I ate and the pit was probably the pit on the inside of the peach. Okay, Raquel, let's Actually, try Actually, the, the peach was James because it was a giant peach. And <laughs> I got to break up with them and I had the balls to do it. And then I met you guys through that. And then we created our own friendships. And that is super special to me. And I appreciate each and every one of your friendships. And Sandoval's mm -hmm. like, seeing your confidence and seeing how you show up as you're like showing up to Lala's party and like doing all this badass shit. I am proud of you, Rick. I'm fucking proud of you. You've come into your own motherfucker. Oh, he slams the table. Ricky's like, too. Um, could you please go out there and ask him not to slam the table? They've already spilled my ranch. <laughs> please, Nate. I don't make many asks of you, but just this one thing. Now, don't turn around while I grease up this gun. Poker face. So um, they're like, cheers to 28. And Sheena's like, um, by the way, everyone, um, Christina Kelly's having like an event at Tom Tom tomorrow. And she like just texted me and I'm like, like she said, hi, I'm having a little event for my like skincare brand called Hot Spring tomorrow. And like you and Brock and Summer should come by. So I just want to announce that to anyone. So that way, if in case no one was invited here, you all felt bad a little bit. Okay, thanks. Raquel's like, I haven't been invited. And Schwartz says that she could be his day. And everyone's like, ooh. And he's like, I was just kidding. I was just kidding, guys. And uh, Raquel goes, yeah, okay. I would love to come as your friend date. And he goes, and is my real date. And they fist bump. And mm. then um, Nate, Nate comes in and he's like, children, bar time, bitches. <laughs> Natasha Leone is like tending to the bonfire. Yeah, I'm here for three days. Got to figure some shit out. Actually, they, they could actually use her. <laughs> they could really use her for this scene. She would get to the bottom of the scandal before everything. Everyone well, it else. would be that kind of mystery because we already know the ending, right? That's yeah, that show is you already know the killer. You're just watching how it all went down. This whole this whole format <laughs> is very poker face. It is like we really need her to just like sit everyone down at and be like, okay, guys, before you go back to go back to Los Angeles, let me tell you something. He's fucking her. She's fucking him. You have no idea. And these two idiots, they just have a vlog. Okay, great to see you. So they're big. Um, bar time is just sitting around a fire because it's, I mean, what are you going to do? Yeah. It's a yurt, right? So they're outside and Raquel's talking about how she has pressure from her parents to make something of her life. And Ariana says, but what about pageants though? And she goes, I'm aged out of pageants. And that was a big dream of mine to be Miss California and to be a role model for girls and women. Hmm. Are you well, fucking she's kidding really, me? She's, <laughs> listen, she's doing great work. Doing great work in the role model front. So, um, yeah, she's like, she wants to be a, a role model for girls and women and all that stuff. And uh, she said, like, that was a big motivation. And, like, I made sure that, like, every aspect of my life was consistent. And, like, I was never going to fuck up. That's what I'm like. And she says, you're, that you're she saying this on camera. 
Yeah, she's like, and I was always a good girl, but now that I've aged out of pageants, I don't have to worry about my reputation. So honestly, I think I'm, you know, I'm making up for lost time. I was like, that's not what I'd lost time so. is, though. It's like, you're yeah. not going to be Miss California, so you just do this? That's not what that means. That's and not how that My goes. note is, so that's why you said you wanted to work with da disabled children or whatever. Okay, okay, I get it. That was your trying to be Miss California, and that's why you didn't do it, because you aged mm -hmm. out of the fucking pageants. You fucking transparent asshole that makes me so mad because remember during that time everyone's like oh my god Raquel's so sweet she's not even going to come back to Vanderpump Rules she's going to be working with disabled children or whatever her thing learning disabled whatever it was last year where right. she was like the big hero noble. she's going to go off and work and do something noble and it all turned out that she was just saying that so she could get further in a fucking beauty competition you know fuck yeah. you you're like the worst the worst part of Los Angeles ma'am okay mm. So Ariana's like, uh, she's saying, well, Tom is, Tom is the worst. I think Tom but you're is the fucking worst. the you're fucking the worst part of Los Angeles. Mm. OK, go ahead. Yeah. Man. Sorry. So Ariana's like, you know, Tom is the Von Dutch store and she is the one who goes in and buys the hat. So yeah. Ariana is saying that Raquel is going through all these things uh, through the things she did after breaking up with James and going th like going through all that stuff. Um, she's showing that she's even more even more role model behavior than she ever could in a in a pageant and then she hugs uh, her and it's like this really nice scene where ariana's being such a good person so supportive her. and then raquel's like she has a monologue where she says a crazy thing about pageants is that you have to have this career path put in place and you look ahead and you see that career and then you put a boogie board down on the stage and you just try to keep your balance to make it all the way there so like i uh, think my entire life was like written out for me at a very young age and it just scares me i'm so sorry that you were from a wealthy privileged <laughs> fucking family that put you in beauty contests and promise that you would always have enough money to go to a great college and become whatever you wanted so you could win a fucking beauty contest. Stop your fucking sniveling, you crazy. <laughs> You're a thin white lady with youth in Los Angeles. You literally won the lottery. Shut the fuck up and get to work. Whoever wrote out her life should be fired. <laughs> I'm glad the writer's strike is happening now because that writer cannot be working. So, uh, although I support the writer strike. So then uh, Sandoval, uh, he's like, Raquel, Ariana, and I got you a gift. It's a vintage Versace thing from like 1990. <laughs> Here it is. And Schwartz is like, oh, I feel bad. I didn't get you anything. It's like classic Schwartz. Can't even show up with a gift for someone. Yeah, we know, Tom. So Raquel goes, it's okay. You can give me a kiss. He's like, oh, see, I love that this is just such lighthearted banner. But the other people in my life have like really vilified me, guys. Like they're calling me Bob Alaban. <laughs> um, that the people that are vilifying the kissing, like that's something is like really fucked up. Also, what does vilifying mean? Does that mean like the kissing happened in a villa? Oh, well. Maybe you shouldn't come tomorrow to this event, even though I did already invite you. Oops, looks like I created another conflict. And she's like, are you serious? But I'm probably the only person on this show that loves Scrubs. No, it's not the TV show. It's the Christina Kelly Scrub. Oh, so Ariana's <laughs> like, Katie's mindset is like Schwartz is rubbing it in her face. He goes, yeah, because we're like kind of at war. And I don't know. She's not going to like that I'm bringing you. And she was like, I'll ask her. I'll call her right now. My first thing to say is, um, are you wearing tennis shoes? Because, like, I was totally worried that other people were going to be wearing tennis shoes. <laughs> Hi, this is Sheena. I'm calling from my glamping site, which apparently has access to, like, telephones and stuff because we're really just on the side of a highway. Hi, um, can Raquel come? Okay, great. She says, well... It was just sort of like a gentle sound, and then it sounded like she put some soil into a planter. So I'm going to say yes. So Sandoval's like, who gives a fuck, dude? <laughs> it's so too angry. He's like, live your life, man. And so then um, he tells us, if Katie's mad at you, you can't come to this event. If you say something Katie doesn't like, you should call in sick at Sir, because she'll be there, marrying catch-ups with bitterness in her eyes. It's very entitled. <laughs> while so you're correct, she... while you are correct in that, 
you suck when you're <laughs> you're wrong you're terrible completely. and yes. yes you're wrong overall so no yes. points for you today sir and for me not to give you points when you say something anti katie you've really fucked up so congratulations you pig so one thing that i do love about this show are the little love island easter eggs because very clearly sheena and ariana watch love island because Sheena goes i got a text which is like Thing they think they say on Love Island all the time. So that made like that like warmed my heart hearing Sheena do the I got a text thing. And she's like, Christina Kelly says, Yeah, she can come. So all is like all is everything's turning up for Kel today. She gets invited to the Heart Spring party. So um now she's like later in the evening, she's got her little um her star projector and her yurt going strong, and she's just like crying on her bed because she's so happy, you know. She's like it's this is like the most incredible birthday I could ever have right now. Um, fuck you. So then um, I think this was supposed to be the season finale. That's my guess. Really? I because so. this party is like the soap opera party at the end where they start forcing everybody to talk to each other. You know how they do that? They're like, okay, mm -hmm. James, go up and talk to Raquel now. Raquel, you're going to have a woman empowerment moment. And that's how we're ending the season. Like it Christina seemed like Kelly's they were trying party? Uh, well, I I just don't think they had very much else because they couldn't do it for Raquel's birthday party because half the cast hates her. Um, mm -hmm. Sheena just had her wedding, so you can't give it. To, you can't give Sheena another thing. Ariana's not celebrating anything. I mean, Katie sure as shit not going to do anything. So, like, what are you going to do? You know, mm. think think they wrapped it with the Christina Kelly party. That's my guess. We need to ask somebody. Oh, no. So. Mom Terry is over at Katie's apartment and um, she's like, wow, Katie, talk about full circle. You worked for me for so many years and now here I am to work for you at your sandwich shop. Huh? Hmm. Katie's just like, <laughs> he's like, yeah, about that sandwich shop thing. Um, Have you ever made a sandwich? Could you like make some for us? We don't really know what to do. <laughs> Actually, we're thinking of calling it Baja Cantina. Uh, we're thinking about calling it her Baja Cantina. Um, <laughs> would you mind uh, slipping those recipes Something... into my purse? Thanks. <laughs> Something about Baja Cantina. So um, then we see Lala walking with a husky voice lady who turns out to be her mom, Lisa. And they're like walking around. And Lisa's like, so, I mean, uh, Lala says, I've been like talking to that boy who I bumped peepees with. And Lisa's like, oh, like, oh God, what have you guys been talking about? Do I even want to know? And she's like, yeah. She's like, just, it's like, I mean, is it going to, every time you guys talk, every time you talk about him, I'm always like, oh, she's like, yeah, that's what he does to me too. I said, go stop that, Lala. Listen, I'm just trying to navigate. She says, what are you trying to navigate? The camel tuff? Like, what the fuck kind of relationship is it? Lisa's then we go like, to, oh god, it's so draining. <laughs> we go to uh, we go to Allie and James, and um, they're taking their cone off Mister Banks, who finally gets to scratch his neck, their cat. And he's like, "So, how'd you feel after beach day?" It's doing his like, "I'm pouty sober, James." I'm a yeah, good boyfriend. And I just pout in your face and look deeply at you and pretend I care about your feelings. And Allie's like, I mean, I didn't even get to see you. Like, you were fighting with Lala and then fighting with Schwartz and then screaming and running into the bathroom and falling over and hitting your head on a bathroom stall because you thought you had <laughs> rum in your eye. So yeah. I really didn't get to see you. You were fighting with Lala. You were fighting with Raquel. You were fighting with Schwartz. You were fighting with scorpion bulls. You were... <laughs> Remember when you remember when you accidentally dumped that guacamole in your eye? That's a lot, James. <laughs> it's just a lot for one day. He's like, and he sorry, goes, I didn't yeah, he puckers his mouth. He goes, sorry. <laughs> so then Ali goes, um, you embarrass yourself. And there's like obvious anger there. It's like, what do you mean? There's no anger. There's no anger behind what I said. What I do. I'm not like, look at me. I'm a very calm person. Very calm, happy person. Who's in love? Yeah, she's like, yeah, but then you act like that. So you see how that's confusing to me? And he's like, it's not that feeling for Raquel, all right? It's just I'm losing my friends. Schwartz is done, first of all, you know? And then, then there goes Sandoval, because all he can fucking think about is having his boys back. And I'm upset, I'm upset about it. You know, like, all I've got left is Fat Max. <laughs> um, Next beach day, I'm going to sit that one out. <laughs> well, then I'm going to sit it out to you, because I might be too tired, because I just performed for Cascade. If you'd like to ask me any questions about it, I'm all open, like, next scene. So now we're at Tom Tom, and it's Christina Kelly's Heartspring event, and everyone's showing up. It's Lala and Logan, Logan number one. And then 
Uh, Christina's like, oh my God, Lala, you got the chic memo. You're so chic. Yeah. So they start talking about lip balms. It's like a really fun, it's a really fun moment. So then Sheena, um, is, comes up to Lala and Katie and Katie's mom. She's like, hey guys. Oh no, that's Schwartz. Sorry. It's the abbreviation is the same for both sometimes. So, so. so Schwartz goes up and he's like, hey guys, what are you doing? It's me, Tom Schwartz. Remember it's Bubba. So what do you guys want? You want something? Do you want something, Lala? Do you want something, Baba? Do you want something, Baba, Mama? Mama, Baba? Mama, Baba? And Lala's like, I'll take a Diet Coke, Thomas. So they mm-hmm. order drinks for him, and he goes to get them, and he's like, Katie is giving me the coldest shoulder ever. In Schwartz World, we would have just sat down, they would have called me a dirty little slut, and then we would have had some laughs, but I guess I'm going to stay in a little doghouse for now. <laughs> so um yeah and basically Lyle's like uh Katie do you think you'll ever get to a place where it'd just be like no it's all good and just keep mad distance and she's like if he apologizes which probably will never happen sincerely because it's Schwartz and so uh then Sandoval and Ariana and Raquel arrive as like a trio and Lala's like this whole dynamic is like so strange to me like now we have Sandoval Ariana Raquel showing up together like maybe it's a thruple like I feel like I've taken a hit of essence <laughs> So then Raquel just walks up really awkwardly to the three of them. And she's like, um, hi, Katie. Hi, Katie. Hi. And Katie's like, hi. She's like, yeah. So. <laughs> hey, Tom, could you like make me a Madam Butterfly? He's like, whoa. Because he's like, you want a drink? She's like, can I have a Madam Butterfly? He's like, whoa, I can't make that. I mean, I can make it. I just don't want to. I was sort of hoping you'd say um, some tap water. So okay. I can't make drinks in my own bar. What are you talking about? <laughs> also, Madam Butterfly, what a depressing name for a drink, especially when you're like the tragic heroine in a terror in a love story gone wrong. Like I really don't sure love they... that she ordered that on TV. I don't think that they understand how that ended. Do they know? Do they know that? It's like, oh, hey, here's a new cocktail. It's called the Aida. Enjoy. Elton John's like, thank you, thank you. Finally, some recognition <laughs> for that one. Thank you. Would you like a Tosca? Enjoy. So, um, Lala's like, guys, I used to look at Raquel as such a sweet human being. And now I feel like she's stealing my soul when I'm in the same room with her. She's a very stupid demon. <laughs> Again, I was like, see, Lala winning me over. Just say, keep saying stuff like that. So, um, uh, so then Ariana. Ariana says to Katie, like, can I pull you for a chat, babe? Which is another Love Island reference. And Ariana's like, listen, so the whole thing with James and Allie, like, I just want to nip this in the bud. And Katie's basically like, look, nothing was said to James. Like, when I was at Lala's, Allie asked, like, hey, I saw Tom and and Raquel at the Abbey late at night. And it was just sort of weird. So I was like, yeah, like, Sandoval goes out and Ariana's a homebody. And we just started talking about your dynamic. And, you know, it's like unconventional to people. And some people may not understand it. Well, the way she repeated it was that you said, we don't have any rules. And as long as nothing embarrasses me. And she goes, I didn't mention rules and I didn't mention embarrassing. So I don't know where that's coming from. So then Ariana just kind of gives her a speech where she's like, look, you know, we're going into business together and I'm excited. And I just, if shit's being talked about me, I hope it's not by you. Um, But like, I know you don't like Raquel, but I love Raquel, like, dearly. And she's one of my closest friends. And not only do I trust and love her, but I trust and love my boyfriend. So I understand how you feel, but I'm not going to sit here and be like, whoa, Raquel, like, I don't even know her. Like, I like Raquel, okay? This episode is brought to you by Cringe. Cringe for Vanderpump Rules. So um, now, basically, they're like, they're basically like, okay, like, listen, let's not fight, you know, because we're going to be working together. And I love you, I love you, I love you. So now James sits down with Raquel and he's like, nice bag. She's like, thanks. I still love it. He goes, did I get that for you? Did I? She's like, yes, you got it for me. (laughs) She goes, yeah, as a birthday present. He's like, all right, well, what's up? What do you need? And she's like, well, I'm going to be completely honest, James. He goes, "Uh uh-oh, yes, Raquel. He starts doing his hair. He's like, what's He's just talking. He's talking to himself on the phone. He's like, like literally doing the cliche, like, like Hollywood, I have a door, like Hollywood checking your hair thing. Face, yes, yeah. So, so she's, she's like at your house the other at the beach the other day. I felt hurt. Oh, shut up, Raquel. Enough. You're broken up. You don't get to say like, 
oh, I can make out with your boyfriend. You guys, or I can make out with your ex-husband because you should be over it. You're already broken up. You've been broken up with James for longer and you're and still you, walking in you here giving guilt trips to James about every fucking thing. You don't get to have talks with James every episode. He's not your boyfriend anymore. Drop it, okay? Go to your other boyfriend. Yeah, I mean, stole. she dumped him, so she really, it is like, and he clearly still has feelings for her, so she just should leave it alone. Um, but yeah, so she's basically like, no, like, Rochella meant something. They have this whole conversation about, like, did Rochella mean something to them? Which is just the the idea of it, like, Rochella as a concept is so well, it's hilarious. it's funny because then it's, so many things are funny. First of all, you mentioned already that we call our tour the Cheater Brand Tour, and this became the biggest show of our tour, right? During Feather right. Pump Rules. The other one is there's a shop about to open on this called Something About Her, which this whole <laughs> season basically was. And yes. then, um, what's the other thing? Oh, damn it. I was just going to say, oh, the, it's called Rachella. And this season, everyone hates Raquel so much that they found out her name was Rachel and now call her Rachel. So <laughs> that season led into Rachella, the season. Yeah, it's perfect. So yeah. basically, they're talking about regrets. And, and she's like, she's like, you know what, James? I don't have any regrets in life. I have no regrets. You can't have regrets in life. I'm like, well. Maybe you might want to look back in the past nine months and reassess. Look back to the weekend. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so just James... look back to your, your terrible excuses. Okay. Do you at least regret those that you didn't come up with a better story? And he tells us like he sees now that she was never the girl for him. And he's like, of course I regret Rochella. It was my first proposal and it was wasted on you. <laughs> so then yeah. she's like, yeah, well, I've changed a lot. And he goes, yeah, you have. You've come, grown into a completely different woman, you know? I mean, I'm not saying it's good or bad. I just don't know you anymore. I mean, before I would check it, I would pull out my phone to look at my pompadour and you'd pull a little mirror out of your purse and show me so I didn't have to waste electricity on it. You know, now what? <laughs> now what? Oh, well, you know what? I'm very happy that you've grown and changed into a big fat slot. That's what you all know. Big fat slot. So uh, she's like, okay, cool. Well, I don't regret anything. He's like, cool. So then Lala and um, Lala yeah. and Ariana. What? No, it's okay. Go ahead. It's just oh. more of, It's just more of nothing in that scene. Where he's <laughs> yeah, just so like, all right, I'm proud of you, Raquel. You've done so much. You made some changes. <laughs> Great for you, Raquel. Blah, and blah, then she blah. tries to have another one of those moments where she's like, yeah, uh, he goes, you have changed. He goes, he goes, but it's okay. It's part of life. She goes, yeah, that's why I do everything I do in life. And that's why I don't regret anything. I was like, <laughs> what speech are you giving from what movie? Because that made no sense. What are you and mad like, about right now? Why are you so proud about having no regrets while you're doing some of the most regrettable things that you will probably ever do in your life? So well, you don't while... regret stuff till you get caught in her defense. That's true. Well, she's... She's she's regretting a lot right now. So uh, Lala and Ariana are like taking free shit from the HeartSpring display, um, which is they're lucky because that stuff is flying off the shelves. So great that they got their hands on it. And uh, Ariana's like thanking Lala for texting her about, you know, about, about her grandma and everything and saying how like the summer has been really hard, you know, and she's like, Ariana's like, I don't know how I haven't like faked my own death and just disappeared at this point. Like... <laughs> I don't know how I keep going sometimes, which is like heartbreaking because uh, you just know it's going to get so much worse for her the next few months. Oh, uh, well, her life actually looks fucking amazing right well, now. Well, it's so. it's good. Thank God it worked good. out great. Yeah, right. you know. But um, I love that Ariana is just so trusting that she's like, look at Lala, really just wanting to check in with me while we talk about Scrubs, and right. Lala's like, great. So you're trying to get a business off the ground? Grief, 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 grief. Okay. So I just wanted to make sure you're good because I was at the barbecue and Tom came up to me and was like, Ariana's is really mad at me right now. And she's like, yeah, because he couldn't get a ride. And she goes, um, a ride home to you. She goes, yeah, because like Jason left, like his ride, Jason, he left. She goes, oh, do you think he should have just gone at that time when Jason left then? <laughs> <laughs> and Ariana's like, but he didn't know that Jason left. And he goes, um, no, he did know because I was right. And Ariana just goes, Tom, get over here, Tom. <laughs> it's like, I'm not going to sit here Tom. and defend you. And I don't know what's going on. <laughs> okay. So Tom comes over and Ariana's like, okay, so Jason said he was leaving the party. And then you said, no, I'm actually going to stay. Is that what happened? He's like, what? No, uh, dude, no. Like, dude, I'm dipping out. Not, uh, yeah. Like. He's dipping out like he's sleeping on a couch somewhere in a guest room. 
but on a couch in the in the living room, but also like not there. But so no, that there. didn't happen. Jason said he's leaving. So then that did happen. So and he's in an unbuttoned shirt with a lightning bolt necklace, just fucking dying a fire. So then um, Ariana's like, right, but you tried to stay longer. And he goes, I get. Uh, I mean, I guess. I, I, don't, I don't know. know. I don't know what and, I did. And she's like, okay, so I found out my grandma died while you were there. And then you found out about that. And then you were like, Jason said, I'm going to leave. And then you said, I'm going to stay. Right? Is that So is that what happened? He's like, uh, yeah, I mean, I figured you just want to be alone. You know, so... <laughs> And I was like, why can't you come? And you said you couldn't get a ride. So like, it's like, what about my phone call where I said, can you come? Made you think I wanted to be alone. So Arena tells us that like when her dad died 10 years ago, they weren't even together as a couple. But Tom like went out of his way to be with her because he felt like it was so important. And now it's like she he's not doing it. And Sandoval standing there like, um, I guess I should have like, um, I just kind of like figured like, I don't know. Um, are you familiar with the concept of like dipping out? Because I think it really applies in this situation. Well, it's interesting that Sandoval is still using the same moves because when her father passed, she he was with Katie and then spending all this time with her and making her a priority. It's like he waits. Kristen, it's yeah. like he gets bored. Kristen, what, who did I say? Katie? Oh, yeah. God, could you imagine? <laughs> so and uh, that's why I was like, let's change. Let's fix that before we have too much is... of a strange image. He's definitely a product of the show. He's like broken bird syndrome. You know, he gets bored in his relationship and then goes to look for a little broken bird to help. And that's how he romances his way into their lives, apparently. Because here he is yeah. 10 years later doing the same shit with uh, Raquel, who did not lose a parent, but is um, very much like, I'm bullied. So anyway, he she's like, okay, so we've been together eight and a half years, and I it seems like I'm not as important to him now. And um, she goes, so Lala is asking why you didn't ride with Jason, and he goes, so I mean, I don't know, I and Lala's like, I don't need to know, I'm not in the relationships with him, Sus. And Ariana's like, but I was fine with how things transpired that day, so like, but she was like saying like I was fine, I like I, everything was cool, but now I'm hearing this essentially, right? And Lala's like, listen. It's okay to say you want, like, like say I wanted you to be with me that day. Like, you don't have to act like you were fine. And Sandoval's like, Ariana oh, just takes a long drink of wine because Ariana is, again, trying to just be like, no, it's fine. Like, so whatever. I was fine that day. I'm not mad. Like, why are we talking about this? She keeps trying to kind of be like, no, everything's fine. So Raquel spent the night. So this happened. It's fine. It's Tom, you know? She's trying to just kind of brush it all away. And uh, Lala's like, you are allowed to tell your boyfriend that you needed him when your fucking grandmother died. Like, hello. And Sandoval's like, but I couldn't get a fucking car for two hours. I couldn't get a car, which is li a literal lie. And Lala's like, Tom, I was standing right there. She's like, I know, I know, I know. It's just like so many Ubers like dipped out on me. It was so frustrating. And Ariana goes, you said that you didn't know that Jason left because you were taking a shit. I was like, okay, that, that's just so <laughs> on brand for this oh, show. Oh, man. And the Another music twist. was like, and stops. <laughs> and Tom is just caught. You know, he's just standing there playing with his bangs. And Ariana's like, okay, so you realize that you put me in a position where everyone thinks I'm a fucking idiot, okay? And everyone just thinks you wanted to hang out there another few hours. And Lala goes, yeah, that's definitely what I think because I definitely saw it. I was there. I saw that. Saw it. And Ariana's like, I choose Tom over everyone. Like, I ride or die for you. So I look like an idiot being Tom's number one stand when he's not mine. And Tom goes, okay. And he just shrugs. And he just rolls his eyes. Oh, gross. It's, it's so bad. It's what, a, what a piece of shit. What a huge piece of shit. What a huge, it's like he came out of his own asshole during his lie about being in the toilet. So anyway... <laughs> that was the episode, guys. Next week's episode the show's of... infuriating. You know what? Honestly, I'm fucking exhausted. I'm just fucking exhausted by the whole thing. I just want it to be over now. Just end it. And you know it's going to be like the first 10-part reunion they've ever had on this show. Mm -hmm. Andy Cohen's like jerking off all over himself over there to have like a 90,000-part reunion. I'm just grossed out. I need therapy after this, okay? I'm going to go paint. I'm going to go post Raquel's mental health meme right now. <laughs> and if it's not about positive mental health, just leave me the fuck alone about it. Well, anyway, everyone get your mental health. Uh, check in on your mental health. And um, we are going to be back next week's reminder, next week's Vanderpump Rules. 
will be up probably Saturday night, maybe Sunday morning, because we're doing it as a live show in DC. So thank you in advance for your patience. Um, and we also, can't wait to see all of you there. And next week is crazy because we're doing a bunch of new shows. Bravo's totally changed the schedule, and it is that time again. So we're going to be doing a lot. So we've got um, a new summer house coming out that mm -hmm. takes place in Martha's Vineyard. That comes out this weekend. And Atlanta begins this weekend, Real Housewives of Atlanta. So check back on the feed if you watch those shows. If you don't know that we're coming back, there they are. Go watch them. And guess what's coming soon? Also next week, Dancing Queens which looks yeah. like an instant Bravo one season wonder classic. Yes. And we cannot wait for this shit. It's our kind of show. So uh, thanks everyone. Have a wonderful weekend and we'll catch you on the next episode. Bye everyone. Bye.